presence And I knew this was a place where love abounds For this is the temple of Jehovah on holy ground we are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us pray And at his feet, sweet peace of mind can still be found. For when we have a need, he's still the answer. Just reach out and claim it. We are standing on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus now. The praises they seem never seem to get old. Then I'll stay here forever singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God Almighty over all. You are, you are, and you'll be forever the King. In Holy, holy, Lord. 
singing along with the saints and the elders in glorious song and the praises they seem never seem to get old then i'll stay here forever singing holy holy of Dan and all the family, we just really appreciate everybody being here just to participate in this celebration. Uh, I just have one little quick message to say. Uh, the regular um, folks of the church here, uh, we're not going to be taking a um, uh, offering right now, but there's a basket right on the front table here if you want to drop your offerings off there as you leave. So thank you.
Falling on my ear The Son of God Discloses And He walks with me And He talks with me And He tells me morning. No, I can't. I got to do it the right way. Good morning. Good morning. There. All right. We, yeah, that's, that's how I do it in this church for everybody that's visiting, because usually half the people here are in a coma by 10 o'clock. So I need to wake them up. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, it's just uh, it, oh, more tissues. It's, uh, it's going to be one of those great days because it's a celebration of life. And, you know, some people say, well, Pastor Mark, you're wearing a green shirt and blue pants. Well, I don't dress in black colors. Well, I do on my T-shirts because, well, I, you know, I resort back to the 60s and 50s. But um, today it's a day of rejoicing. So there's a couple things I do, all right, because I learned this from Pastor White, who's back there, that I need to let people speak at celebrations of life. And so for the last 75 celebrations of life that I've done in the last few years, I've had one go horribly wrong because it was, and don't take it wrong if you're Italian because I just found out that I have a lot of Italian running through me. Um, it just went off. I mean, it went off like a rocket. People started talking and then I couldn't control it and it just went crazy. And then I had one before that that I couldn't get people to speak and so I had to go out and physically Yes, you, I know you want to say something with a mic. I've been warned not to do that today, so I won't do that. Um, but I am going to open it up to people. Um, we, we re, we'd love to have you use a microphone because we're recording this. Um, and then maybe you don't want to use a microphone. I, I understand that. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray, and then I'm going to open this up to you all. All right, because I want you guys to be able to speak and maybe share a little bit of some of the stories 
of my mother and so on and so forth. So now we have no Sunday school today because it's not a Sunday school day. Well, it is, but it isn't because of what's going on. So um, the little kids, we, we know they're, they, they're little kids. Some of them like to express their feelings about things. Probably my granddaughter will be the one that does most of the expressing because we have learned that she just likes to talk. So, but that's okay. And she has a little bit of her grampy in her, so she's a little bit of a hellion. So, anyways, let's pray. Father God, we come before you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We love you and praise you, Father. For such a time as this, you are here. And Father, as we just celebrate, the life of my mother. Father, we just ask, Lord, that you would visit us and be with us. We thank you, love you, and praise you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, nobody stole those. All right, so now, who would like to go first? Roland. Roland's, yeah, hold, you'll be next. Roland, his hand was up first. Well, I'm looking for Fred's mic. Is this the one? Come on right up here, if you would. Oh, we want you over here. How's that? All right. And they moved it to Sunny Brook down on Pine Point, Black Point, one of those roads down on the points in Scarborough. So I had a captive audience with this woman. And you know, you never know anyone. You could be in church and you'll see somebody, and yeah, you see the pastor, you don't really know him. I had a chance, I had a captive audience with her, and the conversations we had were fantastic. We talked about family, we talked about things going on, on these, uh, in these times. And that woman really enlightened me to a lot of things. And it was such a pleasure to listen to her because I got to know that this woman truly is a Christian woman. This, tru this woman truly loved God with all her heart. She loved the bi women's Bible study. She, she loved everything about the Lord and serving the Lord. And to s know this remarkable woman, it was just uh, unbelievable because she touched my heart ways that not a lot of people do. Uh, I was able to open up to her. She opened up to me in, in so many ways. Uh, and we never really got in real depth in anyone's personal life. We always kept it kind of the surface so we didn't really dig into anything. But um, it was just a true pleasure to see her. And I was saddened to see her leave Sunnybrook. I know she was happy, but I lost my captive audience because I lost a woman that I love to talk to. We talked about the Lord so much. And it, it was just magnificent. I mean, they had to kick me out of there because I didn't want to leave because she had so much knowledge that I could draw from. And, and that's truly what I want to say about this woman is she touched me in ways that uh, I'll never forget. Uh, her love for everybody, her love for What do I know? <laughs> and most importantly, she was a great servant of the Lord. Uh, and that's what I wanted to say about her. She's truly, truly missed in my heart. She was more than a friend to me. Uh, it's just hard to explain really what she meant to me, but it, words can't express it. I was just grateful to get to know her. Thank you. I 
kick in. <laughs> Arison was like a second mother to me. I was around five years old when she first got married. She was absolutely beautiful. When I was old enough to know who Elizabeth Taylor was, I thought she looked just like her. She was stuck with babysitting me a lot, but she didn't seem to mind, at least I didn't think she did. <laughs> um, and she actually saved me one time when I was about three or so. I used to hunt lions in the backyard. It's a long story. <laughs> and this one day I'll never forget. Of course, I was barefoot, and one of those big, giant black ants bit me right on my toe. I remember screaming, crying, and running inside to the house. But she knew exactly what to do, no panic, as she put my feet in the tub with cold water, and I think she probably put a Band-Aid on it. Soon I was back hunting lions. It's funny the things that stand out in your mind, but I'm also sure that this is probably why I hate bugs to this day. <laughs> she had a great sense of humor, and I loved to hear her laugh. She loved her kids so much. And one other memory I have of her is when all of her kids were very, very little, I just remember the love in her eyes when she sang the, sang the ant song to them. You know the one. Just what makes that little old ant think he can move a rubber tree plant? <laughs> that one. <laughs> but my point is, what I remember the most is that look in her eyes, how much she loved those kids, and how very, very happy they made her. All of my memories of Aristine are good ones. And I always felt safe around her. I don't know why God had me move to Maine. I think there was more than one reason. But I think one of the reasons was so that Aristine and I could reconnect our close relationship again. Because God had a plan for her. I miss her coming over, having one of her favorite teas, and discussing politics or about some old memories that we had. The last time she came to my place, she was telling me how much she loved the cardamom braid that I make. So I was gonna make it for her for Christmas, and I had also gotten her the tea that she loved so much for a Christmas gift. So because I didn't get a chance to do that for her, I made a couple of braids for today in her memory. So if you try it today, think of her while you savor it. And I also brought some of the tea bags for you if you want to try them. I wish we had more time for those visits together, but God needed her. A week or so ago, God woke me up at about 5 o'clock in the morning. And anyone that knows me knows this is way before I would normally get up. Anyway, he put one line of a song on my heart and brought Aristine into my heart with it. It's a song taken from 2 Corinthians 4.17. There's no question what God wanted me to do, so I'm going to sing that one line today because that's what God wants me to do. God be with me. <laughs> Here I am waiting for you to call on me. I have all you need. Come to me. Come and see My burden's light My yoke is easy And I, I'm here with you I miss you, Aristine, but I know that you're up in heaven in no pain dancing with our Heavenly Father. I love you. First of all, I'll say how much I love Tina. I love and miss her dearly. In our Bible study, one of the Bible verses that we had was 2 Chronicles 7.14. And she said, I want you to memorize it. Well, nobody else did. Haley tried. <laughs> but I was determined. And then she didn't really mean it as an assignment. But it's such a good thing for everybody to hear. 
if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And that's all we need to know now because it's what we should have learned from past, from the past, but we haven't yet. She's missed, but I didn't want her to be here suffering. So she, she went to be with her Heavenly Father, and she looked forward to it. And she straightened this rebel out. And I said, um, I think you're a rebel, too. And she says, I am. <laughs> we'll all miss her, but we'll never forget her. And I don't need Don't be bashful. I'm not. I was going to say, I know you're not. <laughs> Hi, my name's Paula. And this has been the church to land in for me. And one of the great things about it was the ladies' Bible study. And those that know me know I'm not very quiet, and it's very hard to keep me quiet. So when you see me up here making a lot of noise with the worship team, I'm in my glory because I'm being noisy. Well, I was also very noisy in ladies' Bible study. And Tina was always giving me the eye, looking at me, because we would interrupt and we would take off on a journey. And she would have a hard time trying to reel us back in. And she was so, the, the way, she was so royal about the way she did it. She wasn't, she, she said everything in a very kind motherly, nurturing way. And I've even been taken aside a couple of times <laughs> and spoken to after the group has left. And, and I said, I can't help it. She goes, I know you can't. She goes, that's why we're having this talk. And as time went on, I really tried to contain myself because it's sheer excitement for the Lord. And uh, he's done such wonderful things in my life. But he has not put his hand over my mouth yet. <laughs> and she, she would always say, I know, I, I know you're excited. I know what you're learning is going to be with you for the rest of your life. And uh, there were many times when Nancy and I, I mean, we'd have 10 conversations going on at this table. But one of the things I remember most was recently, too, it was probably within the last month of her teaching us at Bible study. She, 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 she gave it to us more and more and more to be able to connect with one another in, in what we were doing. Because you could actually see that she was tiring. She was tiring. But she did not want to miss anything. And... Um, and I recall her one time. We always had to put a box of Kleenex in front of her, too, because there was going to be a crying session at some point. And uh, Nancy or, uh, or Barbara would run and get a box of Kleenex, stick it right in front of her, because when she started, it was like... <laughs> and, and she couldn't stop, and it was always about the glory of God. It was always about what we got. So in her doing that, she, she looked at all of us, and I'm sure everybody that was there that day will remember this. This is the best and greatest Bible study I've ever conducted. She said, you ladies are what makes this happen. She said, all your enthusiasm, and all of us are white hair. I mean, we're all old. We're not little kids, you know, but our enthusiasm for what she was teaching was always her goal was to make sure that we were on the right path. And I just, today, am very honored to be saying those words. Thank you, Tina.
Who's next? Anybody? All right. I just want to say that it's been a real joy to know Tina and Dan. Um, when they moved here from uh, South Carolina, we were all excited they were coming, and Tina was a real wonderful contribution to this church. She was an honest to goodness prayer warrior. Whenever there was an issue, Tina was up front and bringing people together to just lift our voices to the Lord and ask for things that uh, were troubling us with the sickness or anything else that was, was going on. Um, he tells us that his mother basically saved his life. Just in all the prayer that went up for the way he conducted himself. I just thought I'd get that in. Um, <laughs> God is good. <laughs> uh, I think the thing I want everybody to take away from here is Tina would want you to know that there's only one God and that you have to make that decision to ask him to come into your life. Tina's in heaven now, and we all plan to be there with her one day. But as horrible as this may sound, if you don't make that decision and realize that God is God and Jesus came to this earth to welcome us into heaven after we've accepted the fact that he gave us that great gift, that's what I'd like you to know because that's what Tina would want you to know, and she wants you to remember that, just like uh, people have said before. She was, she was a great woman, and she was a very honest servant of God. So I just, I just want to leave you with that, and thank you. My name's David. I'm the other hippie in the room. <laughs> uh, I don't want this to sound prideful, but uh, a few months before Tina passed on, we had a, uh, a, a church dinner here, you know, Sunday Sunday potluck, and I was I I turn wooden bowls and vases and things, you know, keeps me up from underneath the wife's uh, feet most of the time. Uh, well, Tina was looking at some of my stuff, and she made a very quiet statement. Oh, if I could only afford that. Well, I knew I needed to give her one, but I didn't have the one I wanted to give her. And it wasn't until a couple months later that she stopped coming to church, but I carried that piece with me every time I came into the building here. But she wasn't here. So I went over to the house, <coughs> unannounced, uh, which is what I do. Uh, I don't tell anybody where I'm going or what I'm doing, but uh, I walked in and oh, it was it was gloomy. Let's say she was she was not feeling good. And she was, her countenance was was low. I sat down beside her on the couch, and I just brought up this little bowl, just fits in the palm of your hand, and I just passed it over to her. sunshine lit that room when she held that piece and uh, that was the last time I saw her here on earth but uh, she was a blessing in my life because she sit right over here next to us and I always called her mom and, uh, she was a blessing to be around thank you very much Are you coming up? Okay. Hi, 
Hi, everybody. My name is Shelly. Um, Shelly or Michelle. Um, Tina was like mother to me. Actually, when my mother passed about five years ago, I asked Tina personally if she would be my mother. And she said yes. I told her everything, everything, and she listened. And when I was having days where, you know, I'd come to Bible study and I was something going on, and she'd always, always tell us, you have to be diligent with your love for God because he loves you so much. And she would tell us that all the time. She always would ease my worries. I and just, she was my mother. I could talk to her about anything. And I just loved her so much. And I know when I get to heaven, I'm going to be looking for her, my mother, my mama. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? I know there are people that want to get up and say something. I'll say something. OK, good. <laughs> You know, I just really want to say that I know my mom and I had this crazy relationship, but it was the best relationship. She could, I could count on her no matter where I was or what I was doing. I'm sorry. And God knows. And Pastor White knows. I was all over the place. But no matter what, she was there. navigate life. Oh, I'm so sorry. Without a mom, I know Nicole knows that, no matter the relationship. And that doesn't mean, uh, you know, I hate it when people say, oh, be good, be nice. It could be the last time you see her. Well, that's no way to live life, you know. But it is a different world when you don't have your mom. But I, um, one thing that she always taught me, always, and I hope my kids do as well, is just we're to abide. And we abide in Christ. We live in Christ. We walk with Christ. When the whole world's falling apart, we keep our eyes on Christ. And that's what gets us through. That's it. There's been a lot, you know, Sam goes back in for surgery next week. I could always call my mom and say, we're going back into surgery. There's mom. I'll call, call everybody. I have my beautiful Aunt Judy, who has been amazing, because now I call her. I said, Judy, I really need you. And she's like, I'm here. And she'll stay on the phone with me for three hours. But that's her sister. And I, and I forget. We forget, I think, sometimes. And this might not come out the way I want it to. But yes, I lost my mother. My brothers lost their mother. But her sisters lost their sister that they've known. She was here before they were. And we've all lost you know, her in this different way. And uh, it's hard. It's just hard for everybody. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was, besides following Christ, the best decision my mother ever made was to marry Dan. Because, because and he doesn't he doesn't understand it. We talk all the time. He's like, I couldn't give you mom this wonderful life. I'm like, wait, what? When you came along is when life got great for all of us. You've been amazing and a gift from God and you've taken us to church and you walked me down the aisle and you have been a dad that any any girl could ever, ever hope for. So I don't know if any of this makes sense, but it was on my heart. And thank you for loving my mom. <laughs> Anybody else? You going to let me speak for 45 minutes? <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody? Oh, my gosh, please. Anybody else? Not yet. 
Yeah, come on up. And she was a great. She was a great lady. She really loved God. I know that. But I'm, of course, I, I feel bad for you guys. And and um, yeah. Um, well. Um, well, the only memory I really have with her is her getting all hysterical when my grandma passed away. And for those of you who don't know who my grandma is, it was Sheena. Um, and well. I'm happy that she's in heaven right now, and and um, I, I I and I really I, and I really hope I and I really hope I see her when I die. I guess um, I, I really hope I see all of you. Um, well, um, I I I stutter walking through that. I'm sorry. Um, and I guess I guess I I've, I've said enough. Thank you. Time filler. <laughs> Anybody else? <clears throat> yes, he does. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody? I, I was waiting for you to stand up. and throughout my whole life we really um, connected on deep conversations and I really appreciated that about her. Um, she was kind of a hard ass at times. I, it was the place that my parents, her house was the place my parents would send me when I was struggling because <laughs> uh, she would keep me in line. <laughs> but it was good because we got to have that time together um, and connect and I realized how alike we really are. I really will miss her, and I know she's in heaven and with God and with my mom and my baby, and that was another thing, too. Um, when I lost Charlie, she, she really, we really connected because she was talking a lot about the baby she lost, too, and how back then, um, they didn't allow people to really see their babies and be with their babies, and um, that was really hard for her. She didn't get that time to grieve and so when I lost Charlie, we spent a lot of time talking about her baby, and um, I know she's there with him, too. And that's really Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Haley, you don't have gray hair, and you're in the woman's Bible study. I just wanted to make sure people knew that. So the Lord just put on my heart to explain the first thing that my wife didn't even mention that I'm going to talk about, is, is to see every time the love that she had for everybody, especially her husband in this day and age, the husband and wife relationship, especially Dan, to see the couple every Sunday morning come into this the love that God created in her heart, that Jesus put in there, was incredible. 
okay? The second part that he, he laid on my heart was the part the wife, my wife told me about was the last day that she, she was here on earth. Well, actually, it was the day prior. I called because everybody was getting spumone and all that, whatever. And I called, and I was doing my rounds, and, and Tina picked up. Next thing you know, Tina was going on and on. To show the amount of love that in her heart that she had was incredible because she, I was talking to her, and she accepted us into her family like we were one of hers. And she referred me to Jeff. She thought I was Jeff. And going on and on and showing, it, it was incredible to see how much love that she could just pour out in this family to accept my family into hers that she only knew for about three years. You know, this wasn't, you know, a 30-year relationship where the whole family is known. But to, to go back to the original point, the love that Dan, I mean, it was incredible. It's just a, such a great illustration that we need as a younger generation to see as a couple. You know, that, that's what the Lord put in my heart. I mean, Dan, you were incredible. For me as, as a husband and a father, to look up to you guys, you know, thank you. Thank you for following Christ. And the other thing that he just put on my heart, again, Nancy, I don't, Nancy, Second Chronicles. My wife was studying that. We have it in my car. It's in my car. And if it wasn't for your, your guy's mother, we want to, and, and to humble my heart. That's it. Thank you again for illustrating. And I know she's looking down on us. And thank you. Thank you, Lord, for putting her here so that she and you could be an illustration to us younger generation. Anybody else? It's like pulling teeth out of a lion's mouth. Anybody? Nobody? All right, my turn. Whew. Now let me tell you about the mother I knew. Yes, she was loving. Yes, she was kind. I've been, I was hit by a frying pan by her once. <laughs> I can't say I didn't deserve it, because I probably did. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting, because we had a unique relationship, my mother and I both. Um, I could talk to her about absolutely anything. And we would, we would have these in-depth conversations of theological things or just life things. And uh, there's a couple of times I remember way back when, when we lived in New Hampshire, and. Uh, I was kind of a unique child. Now that I've learned more about my heritage, I, I know why I'm a unique child. But one day, I didn't like what was going on at the house, so I, I said I was running away. And so my mother packed me a bag full of peanut butter and bread. And she said, this will get you by for a little while. And, and I ran away to Sally's. Now, Sally lived about a mile and a half up the road, and she had a little shed. It had a TV in it, a bed, and a chair. And so I ran away to Sally's shed. Meanwhile, my mother's on the phone with, we'll call her Aunt Sally, because that's what she was. And Aunt Sally said, where is he? My mother said, he's in the shed. I'll go out and make sure he's, he's comfortable. <laughs> so Aunt Sally came out, and she goes, so what are you doing? I said, I ran away from home. She goes, oh. She says, how are you going to get along? I said, well, I have a bag of bread and some peanut butter. And she goes, well, that'll last you about 10 minutes. And she said, wouldn't it be nicer to be home and have a nice supper? And Aunt Sally would always talk me into going back home. And so it was kind of interesting. That's, you know, I'm not going to go into great details, but it's kind of interesting because when, 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 when Mom and Dan got married, as a matter of fact, I'm going to share this with you. Mom said she found the perfect illustration of grace when Dan came into her life. All right, so Dan was grace. And uh, my mother was not an easy person. And, and you know, sometimes she, f she would flare up like a, like a missile. And, uh, and we'd have to go and just wait. But it's kind of interesting because mom and dad moved to Florida, and then they moved to North Carolina, or South Carolina, and then they moved to North Carolina. And, and then all of a sudden, God said, it's time for you to become a pastor and start a church. So we started a church. And within a year's time, my mother started coming. Now, one of the things you have to understand is there were some troubling things that my mother was holding on to. And 
and it's kind of, she, she knew God had a plan for her. And she knew that plan was to come up to Maine and do a Bible study. But she had to deal with some things first. So when they got here, it was in February, and, and, and the reason I know this is it's kind of interesting because Dan was going through all of her stuff, and he brought me a bunch of her writings. And as I'm reading them, I come across th this. She typed out a bunch of her thoughts and her testimony. As I was, as after, in January, I'm going, what are we going to do? How am I going to do this? And the Lord said, I got you covered. And Dan brought me the words that I'm supposed to say today. Because they're her words. They're not my words, they're her words. And, and honestly, I think she had a lot to say. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go over some of the snippets of it in, in, in two seconds. But I, I just want to say this. <clears throat> Those aren't mine. <laughs> Philippians 1.6. And I'll, I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. If you notice the picture board out there, this was one of the verses that she said she got when she was younger rotating through her life. I'm confident that the creator who has begun such a great work among you will not stop in mid-design, but will keep perfecting you until the day Jesus, the anointed, our liberating king, returns to redeem the world. I, I want to stop at where it says, but we'll keep perfecting you until the day Jesus calls you, all right? He calls you. It, it's kind of interesting because as, as when mom and Dan moved up here, um, there were some things that she had to deal with in her life. And they moved up here in October, I think it was October, because I hated to go down to South Carolina. It was too hot. I got out of the truck, got back in the truck, said, nope, I'm going home. It's too hot. <laughs> and my mother looked at me and said, not until you pack the truck and we're on our way. Now, let me tell you something. There were a number of things that tried to keep her from coming to me. We, we got in the truck, and within an hour and a half of the ride, the transmission fell out of the truck. We went into the hotel, and the headboard of the bed in the hotel almost decapitated her. Right, Dan? There was a reason God wanted her here. And that's because he had a plan for her. God has a plan for everybody. So in February, when they came up, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to start a series on three words. And I went, okay, I'll do this. Now, the three words, since she wrote them down in her notes, were this. Uh, where is it? Wrong page. Give, give me one second. The three words were this. It, again, this series was listening, obeying, and applying. Now, I didn't know why God wanted me to start this series. Because it, it was not going to be an easy series. And the Lord told me that. He says, people are going to be offended by this series. But I said, I'm going to do it anyways. Because it was the Lord's will. And in my life, God's will be done. So we started this series. And it's kind of interesting. Because as my mother wrote here, she says, since February, I believe about listening, obeying, and applying the word of God. That's what Pastor Mark spoke about. Not only have I been aware of this truth, but I also didn't see what others saw in her. You see, my mother had an angry streak. Many people never saw it. But it was there. And it was kind of interesting because God said, before I can get you to do this, we need to get some terms squared away in your life. You know, it's one of those things where it's hard when God says, hey, 
we need to, we need to take care of some stuff. And so we're going to take care of some stuff. Now, one of the things that she said here was, I always tried to be nice, she said. Then I would say things that just popped into my head without giving it a second thought. We've all been there. We all know what that is. All right. I never meant to hurt anyone intentionally. Crystal would always catch me and say, remember, in love. And Pastor Mark would lovingly tell me to keep my mouth shut. Be still and know that he is God. Well, the catalyst for my deliverance came threefold all in one week. You see, one thing that my mother had shared with me once was prestige, honor, fortune, and those were the things she put her life on. She also told me in the letter here, which is kind of interesting, that she dragged my Aunt Judy to church the first time, way back. They're all going, I don't remember these things. But then, on another note, when we, when we had moved to Maine and started going to a Lutheran church, Aunt Judy dragged us to a crazy church, which was the Bible Speaks. So, so as, a, as a teenager, well, not even quite a teenager, I was forced to go to church in the morning and then go to church in the afternoon. And then at night, where I'd fall asleep under the pew or bounce my head off the pew, and the pastor would go, excuse me, Mark, wake up. So she dealt with these things. She dealt with these things. I would, I would tell you this, because I know my mother's voice. She would say, don't, don't not allow God to do the things that need to be done in your life to bring about a change so that you can serve him in 100% totality. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. You see, there's one thing my mother could not ever find, and that was rest. I was talking to Dan the other day, and I said, she never slept. He said, no, she never slept. I mean, you know, we'd see her taking cat naps, every now and then, but she never entered into the REM phase of rest. It's, it's kind of interesting because in all the things she learned from God, rest escaped her. Rest escaped her. I, I remember one day she said, well, I have to fix everything. And I said, wait a minute. I said, show me your hands. And this is my favorite phrase, show me your hands. And, you know, without thinking, she held them out. And I said, I don't see any nail holes in your hands. So you can't be the Savior. In, in this whole thing, in this whole thing, God has allowed me to see many things from the past of him working in the moments up to my mother's death. She wasn't alone. And I don't mean the doctors that were there. I don't mean the nurses that were there. I mean the angels that God sent to watch over her. Because they knew in the time frame when my mother would pass. The word of God says that God knew Jeremiah's plan before he was ever born, and he did. God knew my mother's plan before she was born. And he knew that December 23rd, 2021, was going to be the day that she was going to exit Earth. And that she was going to be taken and led to glory. Now, in the last few months, my mother could barely walk. And one of the most favorite places she wanted to be was here. She loved this church, and she loved the ladies in the Bible study. She came to me one day, and she said, towards the end, she said, I don't know if I can do the ladies' Bible study anymore. I said, when you hear from God and he tells you to stop, then you're done. Now, what's funny is when she came, when they came up from North Carolina, the day she started the Bible study was the day Crystal started getting really sick with lymphoma. And so God brought my mother up here 
to relieve Crystal from that time. And it's funny because as Crystal healed and was, and was healed from lymphoma, because she she's cancer-free right now, she, she, she went back to the spot in the ladies' Bible study. See, God's plan is great. I want to I wanna run up real quick. Matthew 11, please, 28. Come to me. I want to stop right there for a minute. Come to me. So many people today don't come to God. They go to all sorts of different things. They try all sorts of different things. And they never find resolve. They never find the rest that comes with Christ. The peace that comes with Jesus. So come to me, who all, all you who are weary and burdened. I'm going to tell you something. If you could see the burden that my mother carried, you'd be shocked. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't individual burden. It was the weight of the world, because my mother thought she was the Savior. And, and it, was, it was funny. She said, well, I don't know. I want Jesus to come back so I don't have to go through this. I said, well, Mom, I said, let me tell you something. It's all God's plan. And if we remember that he's right here holding it all, Fear not, for I am the Lord your God. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. The last couple of weeks, Dan called me. And he said, talk to your mother. And he'd put her on the phone, and she'd say, who's this? And I said, this is your son, Mark. What's up? Well, I'm not home. I go, yeah, you are. You got a green couch in the living room. I would, I would tell her what <laughs> furniture was in her house. She goes, no, no, I'm not home. And who's the man that's here with me? And I said, well, that's your husband, Dan. He's supposed to be there. Oh, okay. I said, you all right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, I love you. I'll talk to you later. Yep, yeah, bye. And then she would call Jeff. And Jeff actually went over in a midnight run to do what he had to do. But as I, as I was thinking about that, as all of a sudden she kept falling. And, and the next thing you know, she's, she's in the hospital. God said she wanted the real home. She wanted to be in her heavenly home. And I said, wow. So she was literally telling us, I'm not home. I'm not home. Because this isn't my home. Now, she went in the hospital, and, and again, COVID hit us like a steel eye beam across the forehead. All of us, all of us had COVID. It was the strangest thing. And so, the, you know, the next thing, the, the young man that came up, Patrick, he was our COVID warrior. He ran from house to house to house of everybody in this church that had it and took care of all of us. Yes. Doing everything he could to make sure that we were okay. We couldn't go into the hospital. This, this is what God gave me. He said, my, my angels were there. They were ready to escort her home. Your mother couldn't walk, but she ran down the aisle. She ran. They did a song earlier, The Throne Room, where it talks about running to the Lord. She ran to the Lord. It was kind of interesting because she had a walker and she, she you know, a little cane and she pull right up close to the door and she'd get out and she'd do the shuffle and I would say run forest run and she'd laugh and giggle and go oh yeah I can't run I said I know that's why I'm playing with you but as she ran down that aisle another mental picture God gave me two days ago she ran down the aisle and there was the Lord ready to receive her now my mother had six miscarriages before I showed up and one stillbirth. And so for her, having children was almost out of the question. And then all of a sudden, I showed up through adoption. Jeff showed up seven months later, and Kim showed up 14 months later. So after Jesus met her, there were the six kids, ready to meet their mother. 
there was a seventh stillborn child ready to meet their mother, ready to meet his mother, his or her mother. There was her grandchildren that had gone on before her, waiting to meet their grandmother. There was her mother, Olive, waiting. You know, some people say, oh, or some people think we're going to have these same bodies. And no, nah. these are temporary things. This is a temporary skin. As, I, as I've studied the soul out, the soul recognizes the soul. And we are getting glorified bodies. And so as she entered in in her glorified body, it was soul communication that identified each one. And here's the coolest thing. Some of you may find this funny. I do. But there's my grandfather, Hugh with his finger stuck out saying, pull my finger. <laughs> that was my grandfather. We used to pull his finger and he'd say, see that duck running under that chair? <laughs> my mother finally experienced the rest that had escaped her the whole time of her life. You see, we can find rest here. We can find rest here. We can find peace here. Because when we receive Christ and we allow him to enter in and we listen, obey, and apply, peace comes in like a river. One of the things I've taught our congregation here is that God wants a relationship with you. Most of you spent more time with your spouses than you ever did with God trying to get to know them. This is the the bridegroom of Christ, or the bridegroom. And, and he wants a relationship with us. And as many of you know, even though my mother had a relationship with him, there were difficulties. There's going to be difficulties in every relationship. It's how it works. But with Christ, we can do all things. And my mother knew that in order for her to come to the place where God had called her, which was that Bible study, she would need to heed the call and conquer all these things. There's something my mother wrote about this church. And I, I just want to read it because I, I think it's pretty interesting. The Lord gave me a clear message for this church. It is this. The church is serving with compassion speaking lovingly, lovingly and truthfully, living in obedience to God's commands and loving one another. This is about those members of this church. This body of believers are an example of heaven on earth, drawing people to Christ through the love for God and each other. We truly believe God's word, therefore we shall live it day by day. God's word is not merely something we read or think about, but something we do. Belief, faith, and trust must have hands and feet, and they are ours. One of, one of the things that I, I also preach is when Curtis came up here, that's my assistant pastor, he came up, and he wanted you to know that you needed to receive Jesus Christ. See, I, I've taught these, these guys never to let a moment pass by where Jesus Christ is not brought up as the focal point of a conversation, because he's the center. He's the center. I know my mother today would tell you this. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you need to do it. Because walking alone through the situations of the world don't work well. And there are things where you need to get. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. It's... Kind of interesting not seeing her sit in that seat. It was kind of interesting. Once we got her back from the, from the uh, I wanted to say nursing home, but it's not a nursing home, the, uh, the funeral home. We were like, what do we do? 
Where do we store her? Where do we put her? And I said, right under the pulpit at church, because this is where she wanted to be. She was with us through everything. And so she needed to be in church. And so for the last three months, she's been at every service. There's been no excuse. She didn't have to walk in. We kind of put her there. And she had a front row seat. And we did. She, she got a ride here and there and everywhere because she loved to go for rides, right? So they'd roll the pulpit back, roll the pulpit forward. She got change of scenery and all that other good stuff. But who was it? Somebody said that I'm not dead because of her. And that's the honest to God's truth. Because risk was my middle name. And just travel with the wind was my second middle, middle name. And I know many times I would come home trying to put the key in the door. I'd hit everything but the key lock. Finally, I'd get it in, turn it, and there was my mother right there. And I'd fall in the door, and she goes, good, I can go to bed now. So I did a series. I started a series this, this last month. It was called Receive, Rejoice, and Rest. Rest was supposed to be last week, but the Lord called me to go to Connecticut. So I went to Connecticut. It's funny, Linda moved up here, and I've spent more time in Connecticut than she did. <laughs> and uh, I said, wow, he's moving the rest part to this. Because that's what my mother really wanted the most was rest. God heard her say, I just want to rest. And he said, another series I did, then your time here is finished. There was no prolonged sickness. There was no prolonged tubes and batteries of tests and ridiculousness. It was, it's time for you to come. And I will give you rest. If there's one thing I know that all of you know that have been in the Bible study with my mother and stuff, is yes, she was very honest, very blunt, and very forward. But she wanted you to understand how much God loves you. Because it's an unconditional, unending, endless love. I know that sounds cliche because that's what that movie was called, Endless Love. I'm not going to sing the song for you. But that's what she wanted you to see. And sometimes, I can say this as a pastor, sometimes we get a little frustrated because we wonder if people are really getting it. Today, as I listen to people speak, you got it. You got it. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. I have to do this, I want to do this, and I'm going to do this. With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've never said, Lord, I, I'm a wreck, and, and I'm, <laughs> I don't know what to do. You're here for a reason today. There's a prayer. And it goes like this. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. I haven't lived for you. I haven't even really had a relationship with you. But today, Father, I want to start having a relationship with you. So Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Forgive me, come into my heart and save me. Redeem my life. Give me insight and clarity into what you have for me transform me which means he's going to take away the old you and start to replace it with a new you forgive me lord transform me and sanctify me sanctification means he's going to reveal a plan to you because everybody has a plan And then it's a simple amen. 
Now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you've never received Jesus Christ into your life. And maybe you just said that prayer. If that was your prayer, then here's what I would like you to do. All right? Because I like to pray. I love to pray. It's, it's a hobby of mine that I just can't seem to stop doing. If you said that prayer, if you asked Jesus Christ into your life, if you, if you asked the Lord to forgive you and start a relationship with you, then what I would like you to do this afternoon is put your hand up and then put it back down. I would like to pray for you. Is there anybody that said that prayer? Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you, Father, as we celebrate my mother's life. I just know, Lord, now, she's sitting there at your feet asking you the tough questions, the mysteries. But, Father, while we had her, thank you. Because, Father, she taught us a lot. And, Father, thank you for teaching her the things that you needed her to hear and the things that you needed her to do. Lord Jesus, we love you, Father, and we praise you, Lord. Thank you for this time. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen. Now, it, it's kind of interesting because, you know, we, we had a couple guests that didn't know what was going on today, and, and I invited them to stay. This is not our normal service, by the way. I'm a lot different when I'm not under the pressure of doing this. And, but we thank you for staying. I appreciate it. Um, what are we doing now? Okay, if, if we're going to go to the graveside, which there's a big yellow bus out there that says loose, um, I'm going to drive people down there because I know a lot of people don't want to drive down and drive back. So I'm